Okay, this is a Hello World in WebAssembly. Now, the whole point of a Hello World program is to set you up with a development environment so that you can move on to more sophisticated programs, right? But first of all, let me disclaim that I'm in, not in any way a professional JavaScript developer. The last time I checked out JavaScript with any attention, the whole notion of a new release of JavaScript is still a novel idea, right? So now we got new versions labeled with years. Also, I'm not someone who intimately work with assembly a lot. Uh, so this is not going to be some uh, thorough tutorial on neither of these things. My goal for this video is to establish a workflow that's something like this. So it's assembly, right? So I imagine we can edit some text file, we can run the assembler program, and then we can get a binary out of that and run it in a machine. In this case, the machine happened to be a virtual machine in a browser. As a bonus, I want to achieve some kind of a uh, workflow, but it should be minimal. By minimal, I mean like I have a Mac, I have a browser, Safari, I have installed Xcode, I have a compiler environment. Lucky for us, as of iOS 11, sorry, Safari 11, WebAssembly is supported. So I shouldn't need any fancy third-party browsers. And I want to be able to work offline. So this is my goal to review. I want to edit some files, assemble, run it in a virtual machine in a minimal development environment. Okay, with all that in mind, I guess the first question should be, what are we editing? So as of late, as far as I'm aware, this is a kind of a recent development. We have a spec'd out text format for uh, WebAssembly. That's that. We can use a text format and transform it into binaries. And it's in the form of X expression. Basically, it looks like Lisp, right? Well, there is some syntax, but the textual requirement is just you use parentheses for units of your syntax. Okay, so we can use our editor to edit this. And then next, let's move on to the assembler. The assembler is something called a Wabbit. Here it is. It stands for the WebAssembly binary toolkit, and it has a bunch of tools that transforms text format into the WebAssembly format, the so WASM format. Let's start by doing this then. I'm going to, okay. I don't even have a folder for this kind of thing, but unfortunately you can't just install this with Homebrew or something, but it should be fairly easy to install. Let's do that. So I'm going to start by cloning the project repo and going in. By the way, I didn't make up Wabbit. It's the official pronunciation, okay? So I'm, I'm not gonna apologize. And I believe there's some sub-modules, so let's update that as well. Oh, maybe not. Okay, let me see, there is some options. We can choose the compiler configuration combination. In my case, I wanna choose clan release, and it's going to compile for a while. It will output the result of the compilation into out clan release. The binary will live here. We're going to take this path and add it to our shell environment. In my case, I happen to use fish, so I have to add it in path, path variable, and the path. It makes it easier to type and use those resulting binaries. We just finished compilation. Uh, we have all these tools here. I think the easiest way just to start it. Now I can use the tool called wat to wasm. That's basically our assembler, right? Again, it's wat to wasm because the source file is supposed to end with .wat as an extension. So I guess the next part is the wat file. I mentioned this is going to be S expressions, so they look like Lisp, right? So I do want to add that to my editor so that we get some syntax highlighting. This is totally not necessary if you're using some other text editor. Set ft equals Lisp. So this is where we're going to work on uh, our project, right? So it's just a blank folder. Again, our goal is work offline, so we'll have some HTML file we can open with our browser, right? I don't think I even have the developer options enabled on this machine. Here we go. I should be able to go to the JavaScript console, and our goal today is to see Hello World. That's it. That's it. So let's start by make a HTML file. So play.html. Uh, I prepared for this a little bit, so if I do this, and I believe something like this, it will give me a HTML5 template. Again, there's nothing in this file that's just standard uh, boilerplate for HTML5. 
and then I need to install a script. Hopefully that works. Okay, and we're going to make a, a main.js. We're going to write our JavaScript in a different file. How about play? So now we are done with HTML. I should be able to open this file and it's nothing as expected. Our goal is to see stuff in JavaScript console, right? Well, let's create the play.js file. And all I'm gonna do is say console. Now this is not the, the end goal. I just wanna see it here, right? So now we have our environment. So our workflow would be edit the WAT file, assemble it or compile it. And then we should go back here. And when I refresh, I'm looking at the output here. Okay, so now let's get to the exciting part, writing WebAssembly. The simplest program in WebAssembly you can write is module. It's just like this. It's a module with nothing in it. The most basic unit of code in WebAssembly is a module. I imagine it's just a namespace also comes with associated memory. So it has a namespace so you can, you can interact with the rest of the runtime environment. Uh, mostly for us, it's the browsing environment with JavaScript. So you can export stuff to and from JavaScript and WebAssembly and get things done. Okay, now that we have the main.wat, we can use the tool we installed earlier and just say main.wat, right? If I, if I do nothing, it compiled. It compiled a thing called main.wasm, right? I can also say uh, wat2-v, this will output the assembly in a pretty printed format. In this case, it's just literally two version numbers, I guess. But we can see more sophisticated input if we want. Uh, with compiler project like this, I usually want a faster way to trigger the compilation. So I'm gonna use Gnu Make. There are probably like a million tools. That's not going to happen here. So all I'm going to do is say wat to wasm, and we're going to say uh, main dot wat. Output is main dot uh, wasm, and we may want command v or maybe not. Command v is too much. Having this, I can just run make and they'll run the command for me and update our make file. So we have the main dot wasm. It's the binary result of a WebAssembly program, right? The next step is to load it into a JavaScript environment and execute it somehow. Now I'm going to get rid of the console hello world and start doing that part. We're going to use something called a fetch API. I, I only learned this in the context of doing this video. And apparently it will fetch the URL you give it and give you a promise in JavaScript. So that's kind of fun. So with a promise, you can say then and then give it a Lambda syntax. But in the Lambda, all we need to do here is demand the response to be a array buffer. In, in the term of WebAssembly, it's a linear memory. It's just literally a bunch of bytes in sequence. This call converts the response body typecast into that. And then we'll get another uh, promise and we'll call this new thing byte. So next part, we're going to use this WebAssembly object which is uh, the key player in the context of JavaScript. This object, WebAssembly, it's just exists in the global space in any modern browser that supports it. You can see a lot of browsers support it. With this object, you can allocate memory, you can allocate table, you can get a instance of your module and use states in the module. So we're going to create it like so and just give it our bytes. Uh, and this is a JSON object. It's stuff that you want to expose to this instance of your module. In our case though, we're not going to use any today. With this, we'll get a result of the instantiation. The result will have something called an instance. The instance object is the WebAssembly instance. We can start using it. So all this is to load our module and instantiate it and so that we can use it in a in a JavaScript context. So here I'm just going to call main, uh, which is a function I'm going to write now. It'll get the instance of the WebAssembly, right? What if I say uh, console.log uh, wasm? This JavaScript file, play.js, is already loaded in our HTML file. And then our file will load the binary from our assembly code, and then we'll use that here. So this is how things are hooked up. If I go to the browser and refresh now, we'll get a uh, cross-origin request uh, error. I mentioned in, the, in our goal section that I want to use as little tools as possible. So 
we can use the built-in Python uh, uh, server. So if I run this command, now basically I set up a server on uh, this IP and this port. So local, if I go here and open the developer console, now you can see we got an instance of the module, which is the WASM file, uh, binary, basically. I want to add that to our make file to streamline the workflow a little bit. So simply python-m. So I can go to a new tab and say make serve and just forget about it. All right, so we're almost there. We are now ready to write a hello world. Essentially, as far as I'm concerned, this video is done, but I wanted to see hello world, right? So if you know um, WebAssembly or you want to learn about on your own, you can stop the video now. Please subscribe if you liked it. Otherwise, I'm going to write it, my version, my interpretation of it here. So let's go back to our wet file, and I'm going to add more stuff to the module now. First thing I'm going to add is a memory. The way the current implementation of WebAssembly works is you can only have one linear memory per module. If you say memory one, it will allocate a page, which is 64 kilobytes of memory. 64K should be enough for anyone, right? And I can write stuff to the memory by saying zero. This is the start location in the linear memory, basically the index in an array. You can think of it that way, right? And then I'm just going to say, hello world. So now I have a module with a memory. I can compile it. I have a module with a linear memory of 64 kil kilobytes and uh, from the zero uh, location, I have the string hello world inside it, okay? So that is hello world. But again, we're not seeing it in the module in any way because we all we did is export the instance of the whole module and the module is not doing anything reading from its memory at all, right? So to do that, I'm going to have to export the memory by doing this, give it a name. I'm just going to call it memory. So this will export a variable to the instance. Uh, the instance has a thing called uh, a property called export. Now that property will have another property called memory, which is a reference to our memory. Uh, to keep it simple though, I'm going to just uh, say that, okay, that is one piece of information I'm exporting. Then I'm going to export another property, which is the length of the string I'm writing. So I'm manually exposing the length. And again, this is where you write a global and to export it, you again say export and give it a name. So I'm gonna call it a length. And similarly, I'm going to write a position. Now I have exposed two other pieces of information. One is how long is my string? And the other is where the string starts. Basically, it's the same as this. Let's build our program and make sure we didn't make any stupid mistakes like this i32.constant, oh right. You also have to specify the type. Okay, cool, now we compiled. Now I'm going to go back here again. Well, I deleted the console log, but if I keep it back, I wonder if we can see the exports here. Yeah, as you can see, we saw the exports already. We have a length, we have a position, and we have a memory buffer. The memory buffer has 64K stuff in, in it. Uh, so we did log the instance here, right? And we saw it uh, in our console that uh, we have under exports, we have all the property we need. So I can, I can grab that out. Wasm.exports.memory is a memory. And then we will have length, right? So we have the memory, the length, the position, and now we're just going to print out the content from the memory and we're done, right? It turns out it's not so simple. I can log the content of the memory now. As you can see, it's not, I mean, we saw this earlier. I think the memory also has a property called buffer. Memory buffer is an array buffer, which I believe is a type in the JavaScript environment today. This part I, again, lifted from a tutorial, but uh, we can convert the buffer into an array, apparently, by using this thing. And this is where our position and length comes in. So now that we have this unsigned int array, we can convert it into a string by doing text decoder and then give it the uh, encoding, decode the bytes. 
and that will give us the content as a UTF-8 string. Now we're ready to see hello world. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you liked the video and I'll see you next time.